Now, throughout the 1980s, various different manufacturers, of course, produced tower systems, some of which were made to look as if it was a separate components with a, a strip in between, like this. But as you can see, when you look at the back of it, it's all screwed to the same chassis, if you like. There's no separate bits in there, really. Now, this belongs to a friend of mine, and uh, they've had it years. Uh, eventually, it was put in the garage when he got married. And uh, quietly forgotten about, because mostly the cassette deck didn't work properly anymore. You can see here you've got a rather nice big display LED clock, complete with an alarm function and a sleep button that would allow you to listen to the radio for a while and it would then turn itself off or tape or even I dare say a record because uh, there is a record deck that usually lives on top the dial lights up only from the one end because you have here a signal strength indicator with the red LEDs and a stereo beacon FM AM radio Ah, oh, there you go, look at that, you see? And that's your signal strength. If I tune out a bit, you can see it uh, flicker up and down. Oh, I bet this isn't the first time this old thing's played this tube. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't sound bad for what it is. Moving on to the other controls, you've got speakers A and B, although given that the thing only draws 15 watts from the maids, I think that's a little optimistic. There's an AFC switch for listening to FM stations, and even a high filter. To uh, Well, it can be used for two things on here. You can get rid of lots of hissy crackly fits on the records or of course use it to reduce hiss on the tape down here are two LED power level indicators for each well it's one for each channel and they are dependent upon the volume that you're playing back at they're not connected to the preamp as you'd expect you'll see what I mean if I turn this up they'll suddenly splutter into life. But it has to be quite loud to do that. Down below you've got volume, balance, tone and the all-important selector switch which is rotary, AM, FM mono, FM stereo, tape and photo. The tape deck mechanism is quite nicely made, but uh, the thing that was wrong with it, well there were a couple of things wrong with the whole set really, the headphone plug is kaput and uh, in order to get the speakers to run I've had to wire that short circuit. Because although the right hand channel sang merrily away, the left hand channel flatly refused to and I traced the fault back to this. So uh, we'll have to get another one of those at some point for it. But the most uh, annoying thing was the cassette. The original motor is here, and it's one of the old-fashioned uh, govern types. It's made by Matsushita Electric long, long ago. It's on 11th of May, 82, on the casing. You may just be able to make that out down there. Once these things start to act up, you are stuffed, because uh, there's nothing you can do with it. Inside there is a very intricate centrifugal governor on the armature. And when the motor attempts to overspeed, because there's too much voltage, the tiny little contacts are centrifugally open, and it slows the motor down. This happens so quickly 
and under the control of usually tiny little ceramic capacitors that your urea doesn't pick it up. But in the end, when the little contacts begin to wear and the spring gets a bit tired on the centrifugal bit, uh, they just won't run properly at all. Um, the, the usual thing I did with these was to just chuck them out and fit an electronic motor. Now, where the hell am I going to get one of those from in this day and age? I hear you asking. Well, it's like this. In my shed I have two drawers full of old motors from videos and tape players and cassette decks and servo motor type uh, record players. Um, so it wasn't a problem. And there it is. The speed adjustment is dead easy on this because all you have to do is put a screwdriver into that little dust proof opening there where there's a tiny little piece of rubber with a little cross cut in it, a bit like those things that you see towels shoved in in your grandma's kitchen you know, on the rack. And then you just, that way for faster, that way for slower, just like turning up a volume control. And when you're happy with it, that's it. It's quite a well-made thing, this, for what it is. It's, well, after all, it's approaching 30 years old. Uh, if this was now, you'd see an awful lot more glue and gunge around the place. Well, let's see how this uh, tape deck sounds. Not a trace of any flutter. That's what we like to hear. Ha! Huh, flutter. <laughs> this tape mechanism is called a, a Taiwan pigeon. <laughs> yes, well, we know what pigeons usually do, don't we? And it's uh, not very nice. Anyway, all I've got to do now is put all this back in its casing and then sort out the record deck, which is running too slow on its... Uh, 33 side, it's LP playing side. So uh, more about that perhaps a little later. Bye for now in the meantime. <laughs>